So here we are on another day, uh, April 7th, and we're still down here in the Pensacola area. And it is still beautiful weather. This is just absolutely great weather. Woke up this morning, went outside, grabbed my candle, grabbed my coffee, and just sat there for like an hour and a half, two hours, just enjoying the nice warm weather. It's very, very, very nice down here all in all. It is so nice and it is so warm, in fact, that in about an hour, we're going to be taking uh, our little boy Tonto to get sheared. So uh, Tonto, our little corgi, uh, one of the issues with corgis in hot weather is that they, they're built or they're designed uh, for, for the, the English weather, you know, kind of cold, kind of rainy, never really too hot. And so they have two coats of fur. They have the upper coat and they have the lower coat. And it's really great. If it's cold and it's rainy and it's nasty, corgis can go out there and they can just keep working and not care about anything. Problem is, is when it gets warm, when it gets hot, uh, they turn into little slugs. <laughs> so we, uh, so we're taking uh, Tonto in about an hour uh, to go get sheared. So we'll shave him all the way down to about hair about that long, and he should be a lot happier. We've only sheared him once in his life. We sheared him way back when. Um, but he was he was happy for the experience and especially now with uh, with uh, him not really having climate control the way he's used to having climate control we think uh, shaving him will be be a good deal so let's see yesterday we went over to the uh, Pensacola air base here so our naval 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 air station NAS is what they're called uh, so Pensacola is home to the, the naval air station here that they're home to uh, what's called the Blue Angels so the Blue Angels are a demonstration flight team so they get in jets and they do all kinds of weird stunts and all that kind of stuff in the military uh, you know aviation stunt team uh, so it's home to that but basically we went over there and there's a few things over there you can see uh, civilians that's free and you can walk through and it's nice uh, the first thing that we went to see yesterday is they have the national navy aviation museum which is really nice um, it's one of those museums. Uh, it's not quite as good as as the uh, the space air and space museum in Washington D.C., but it's really close. Like as an aviation museum, it is a really, really, really good aviation museum. You go in there, and they have lots and lots of airplanes. And the cool thing is, they have a lot of airplanes that you probably haven't seen before. So they have this one massive seaplane. It was just huge, just huge, back from like the 1920s. And I've never seen one of those before outside of the picture books. Like actually sitting there and looking at a real one is really cool. And it's also really cool to see the, the type of technology that they used 100 years ago. I mean, to think about one little person getting in this massive contraption and trying to fly somewhere is really cool. So I went, we went over there and they had a lot of different stuff. They had jets and they had biplanes and they had helicopters all just kind of strung up it's really it's really cool when you go to an aviation museum where they have entire airplanes just kind of hung all willy-nilly around you know it's, it's a cool experience you go over there there's a couple of different buildings lots of different aircraft they have history of course there are lots and lots of explanations on what all this different aircraft is I read a little bit of it and kept going uh, for me I find it's just cool to look at it's just cool to sit there and to touch and go wow that's a cool little widget. So we went over there. Uh, the Naval, the, the, the Aviation Museum, uh, depends on what you're like personally. Uh, for us, it took us about an hour probably to wander through. Uh, but if you're with kids or whatnot, you can probably take two or three hours to wander through. There really is. There's a lot of stuff there. It is, it is again, as an aviation museum outside of the Air and Space Museum up in Washington, D.C. Um, you're not going to get very much better. There's there's just a lot of stuff. So, that's, so that was cool. We got to wander through that, and that's free. That's nice. That was good. Um, and then going over to um, Bar Baracas. Baracas. There's a there's a fort um, on the, 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 the air station. Uh, so we went over there. So it's a fort um, that's now a national park. Uh, so you can go and you can wander around that. Uh, it, it's, it's a nice enough fort. I mean, one of the issues with a lot of American history is it's just not that cool. <laughs> it's nothing against us. Um, it's just like when you go to Europe or when you go to these Asian countries and they have forts, man, they got forts. You know, they've got castles, they've got citadel, they've got stuff that's really, really, really cool. 
Unfortunately, with a lot of American architecture, you just put a lot of bricks together and you get these really big, blocky, utilitarian buildings. I'm very good at doing the task they're designed to do. Uh, not so pretty. But, so we went over there and wandered through uh, Baracus or whatever the hell it's called. Fort. It was kind of cool uh, just to wander around in it. Uh, one of the nice parts with uh, Baracus is that you could go into the, uh, the internal walls of the uh, the fort, which is kind of cool. Uh, so basically, you go down, you take a right or you take a left, um, and then there's the this hallway that goes all the way around the fort. And it's really cool because you walk through it, and it's just archway after archway after archway after archway after archway after archway. So you just get kind of get wandering through, and make sure you're not claustrophobic if you go to it because there's no way out. Like you start here, and you have to go all the way around. Uh, until you can get out. But it's kind of a cool experience to wander through that and take a look at it. Again, not world class. Uh, aviation Museum, world class. Fort, yep, it's another fort. Uh, the other thing though, if you do go see the fort, do make, just make sure to see they have the redoubt. Um, so they have the main the main fort here. And then if you take a little half mile walking trail, uh, there's, a, there's another portion of the fort system. So the main fort was used for securing uh, the ocean area. And then there was a second fort that was built uh, to secure the actual land area. Uh, so that's up there. So if you wanna go see the fort, go take a look at that. Again, that was completely free. Uh, we skipped the, uh, the lighthouse that they have there because as I've said before, you know, it's a lighthouse. It's just, you know, I've seen a lot of lighthouses before. But overall, again, the uh, the Aviation Museum is well worth it. And uh, since you're at the Aviation Museum, the, the fort is only, you know, a little bit way, little ways down, so you might as well go see it. Now, the one thing to realize is that this is on a, um, a Navy installation. So this is on, is on a military post. So when you're going to it, when the GPS coordinates tell you where to go, um, you're gonna go to the uh, the installation, the, the entrance. Um, but it's really easy to get in. There's no big deal. Uh, I know my wife was a little nervous. I guess she's never been on a military post before. Like, oh no, it's the base. Ah. Anyways, but all you do is you go up, you talk to the security guard, you give them the driver's license, and then you go on through. So it's not a really big deal. That's the only kind of thing with it is it's, I can see how a lot of people would be nervous because you go up and you know, there's this big entrance and there's security guards and military people and all that, but it's really no big deal. You just walk up, you show your ID, you tell them why you're there, and then you go on in. And overall, like I say, it's it's a very nice place. The, the, the Aviation Museum was really, really, really good. So, uh, so yeah, yeah, that was yesterday. So today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be shearing, uh, getting a Tonto all shaved, all buff and all hairless. Uh, that's going to be happening in about an hour. And then we're going over to a state park where you can't see it, but it's like literally right there. Uh, looks like a very nice state park. Again, what I like with this whole Pensacola area is if you like the ocean, if you like the water, there are so many state parks, there's so many national parks. It is, it's weird. It, it's, it's obviously there's a lot of people here, so it's a populated area, but it's not overpopulated. If you know what the difference is. Yeah, so many of these beach areas you go to, and I don't mind that there's people around, but there's so many people around, it drives you nuts. And what's nice with this place is you get all the amenities that you get from most of these beach areas, but you don't feel oppressed with people. At least now, what is this, April, April 8th or something. At least right now, it doesn't feel oppressive. So that, that's a nice thing. One of the quirks that we have found, one of the tips for any of you people going out there and you're deciding to do your own little RV uh, expedition of your own, something to keep in mind because it is now driving my wife absolutely insane, is ever since we got to Florida, none of these RV places, none have been doing recycling. So one of those weird things you don't think about until you actually run into it in the real world is none of these RV places down here in, uh, in uh, Florida do recycling. And so it's really driving her nuts because she really likes to recycle. Recycling is something that you should do, right? Because, you know, my wife is the vegan. My wife is, you know, the, the tree hugger type thing. All good. Um, and that's one of, like, the weird annoyances you don't realize. Like you just assume in the modern world in 2015 that everybody in the world does recycling. You just assume recycling would be absolutely everywhere. But just something to keep in mind, if you are with a spouse who really, 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 really cares about recycling, do not assume RV parks do recycling. I really don't know why. I really don't know why that is. So how we've been dealing with recycling is she puts it all in a big container. And then all the national parks have little uh, RV or, or have uh, 
recycling bins. They normally have big dumpsters you can dump recycling in. So she does that, or around here, I guess behind the sheriff's station, there's a, there's a self-service little recycling area. So that's how we're gonna be dealing with it. One of those tips for being on the road is do not assume there will be recycling. So with that, I probably have to get back and, uh, and start prepping uh, Tonto to get shaved. It's so adorable when you shave a corgi. I remember it was so funny with uh, with my wife because um, we, we got our corgis, right? So we got Tex, we got Tex wow, almost 10 years ago and then we got Tonto uh, about eight months after we got Tex. Um, and so it was the first, I think it was like the first summer um, that we had Tonto and we had Tex. And Tonto was so hot. Again, he just had this massive coat of fur on him. He probably has like three pounds of fur on a 30 pound dog, right? So he has all this, uh, all this fur on him. Um, so I, I was looking at him and there were other dogs in the area that got shaved, you know, these big fluffy dogs that got shaved. So I was looking at my wife and I was saying, you know, hey, um, I really think we should probably shave Tonto. He's just really, really hot. And then remember my wife looking at me and she just shook her head and she said, a, a shaved Corgi would be the dumbest looking thing. And the, but the funniest thing was, the funniest thing, so I was like, eh, okay, whatever, I'm losing this argument. And then we go over to her aunt and uncle's house, and they have a farm. And they, in fact, have corgis too. So we go out to, uh, they're having some kind of party out there. And then we go out, and we see their two little corgis. And they have two little corgis that are completely sheared. And I was like, hey, look, your aunt and uncle did it. And they are... I do have to say, sheared corgis look like the goofiest things in the world. They're so happy though. It's so funny because you can shear a corgi and they look so stupid and yet they still have that happy look on their face. They're just so happy. They're just like, I don't care how stupid I look. I, I'm happy. So, so yeah. <laughs> you don't shear a corgi to make a fashion statement. You shear a corgi to make a corgi happy. That is my theory at least. But anyways, with that, I will let you guys go and see you tomorrow.